Happy Africa Day 2023 and welcome to this special edition of the Focus Sessions. Today we celebrate Africa. Today we celebrate the safety progress achieved over the past 60 years. Because it's easy to forget that thousands of professionals in Africa, you, work very hard every day at making commercial aviation the safest form of transport, also in Africa. And they, you don't do it because you're expecting special recognition. No, you do it because you think safety and act in ways that promote safety, because you know the aviation industry and your economy depends on that, and because it is simply the right thing to do. Aviasist has been part of that journey for the last 28 years. Now, before we go to our discussions here at the table, for those of you who maybe don't know much about Aviasist, Allow us to introduce ourselves with this short video. Africa, a continent on the rise. Africa is the world's second biggest air transport growth market, and there is a lot to do. Africa is in the process of giving the continental aviation industry a place on the world map, on all fronts. This requires unprecedented efforts, even more so in a post-COVID-19 recovery. It means eliminating a backlog, but also respecting sustainability and CO2 emissions. Building safety on the ground and in the air with technical and operational training. More than ever, international cooperation is vital to give what is arguably the most important economic link between Africa and the rest of the world, connecting people across the vast distances in Africa. An essential link, and that's why there is AVI Assist. Africa and AVI Assist. We have been leading, building and supporting safety promotion for the African aviation industry since 1995. Affordable, independent and professional. We stand up for aviation safety in Africa. We change attitudes and produce safety. Our professionals support African professionals and we do it with passion by delivering on-site and online courses across Africa and more. AVI Assist. Join us in Kingali or anywhere else on the continent. The African aviation industry needs you right now more than ever. AVI Assist. That's us. Passion for safety in African aviation since 1995, powered by volunteers. This year also marks the launch of the AVI Assist lunch lectures. We'll be organizing them every year on Africa Day from now on. We'll be hearing from our reporters Patrick Odiase in Lagos and Winnie Ongiri in Nairobi later in the show when they'll report on the lunches that are taking place in Nairobi and Lagos while we are on air. Now, what has been the biggest improvements in aviation and aviation safety to celebrate over the past six decades? How has safety and safety oversight changed over those past decades? Aviation safety is also about people, about you. And how are our people, our African aviation professionals, doing and looking after themselves? We're lucky to have someone here at the table who can help us look back at 40 of those 60 years since the start of the African Union. Chamsu Anjurin has joined the aviation industry in 1978 as an aeronautical engineer for Air Afrique. After Air Afrique, he worked for aircraft manufacturer Boeing as Director of Government Affairs and Market Development and as the Director of Aviation Safety for both Africa and the Middle East. He's also one of the founding fathers of a fairly new organization, the Aviation Safety Alliance for Africa. The Voice of Africa. Chamzu, bienvenue to the studio. Merci, Tom. Good to have you here on this special day for all of us and all of Africa. Thank you. I'm also joined here by um, a women aviator, who has worked in African aviation for most of her career. Marilee Heister worked at the ICAO Regional Office in Kenya, has been involved in numerous consultancy projects, including the single African air transport market, and she was the senior program manager for AviAssist for 13 years. 
the Foundation's leading lady behind the screens. So welcome, Arlie, and great to have you at, uh, in the front of the cameras, in front of the cameras for a change. Thank you for having me. Love your outfit, <laughs> festive uh, to celebrate today. Um, as we chart our way with you towards the future, I'm also joined by someone who represents the next generation aviation professionals. Nana Akiman Abu Bonsra is a qualified lawyer and a member of the Ghana Bar Association. He has worked in civil and criminal litigation and is now broadening his horizons into the aviation industry, studying air and space law at Leiden University in the Netherlands. Happy Africa Day to you. Uh, Thank you very much. Great uh, to have you here. Uh, and thanks for having me here. The cold climbs of uh, <laughs> the Netherlands to some extent. Um, now, before we start looking into safety achievements over those past 60, days, 60 decades, um, let's remind ourselves of safety progress in our industry across the globe with this wonderful video by Airbus. No video. Okay, it seems the video is currently not available. Uh, so in that gives us the chance to dive in uh, straight away to the discussions here at the table and look at some of those remarkable uh, achievements in aviation safety and perhaps also celebrate, I think particularly Marli and Chamzu, because uh, you're just entering our industry, celebrate a number of leading safety champions. Chamzu, let me start with you. Uh, 40 years in African aviation, a very big achievement in itself. What are some of the main improvements that you have witnessed uh, over time? In aviation safety, I would mention uh, three majors. Okay. One in the safety oversight capability of the continent. Uh, second, in the industry capabilities itself, best practices. And third, working, re working together relationship between government and industry. And industry. So, so away from separate silos, in yes, an extent. Yes, and that has been uh, inspired by the global uh, movement as well. You know, we, uh, in the, at the global stage, uh, in the U.S., CAST started in 1997. Commercial Aviation Safety Team. Commercial Aviation team. Safety yeah. Team. It was an initiative uh, launched by President Clinton in the U.S. to reduce uh, fatality risk in the U.S., and it established a working together between industry uh -huh. and government, which worked well. So we replicated this model through all the efforts. Um, it Not inspired, just in Africa, but it was replicated it, up, it was around worldwide, the globe. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It inspired actually the first ever uh, IQ initiatives on bringing together industry and government working together. At that time, there was the ISSG, which is the Industry uh, Safety Strategy, Strategy Group, group yes. uh, formed by uh, IATA, ACI, uh, Flight Safety Flight Foundation, Safety Foundation yeah, yeah. Council, Boeing, Airbus, and uh, IFALPA, uh, Pilot, Association. Yeah, Pilot Association. And they all signed at the highest level the commitment to improve safety worldwide. From the industry side. From the industry side. And ICAO adopted that... Uh, Roadmap. They, they, produce, they produce a roadmap, a global aviation safety roadmap that I came embedded in the global aviation safety plan. And this was around 2005. I that, think, yeah, this was around 2005. If I can just, you mentioned the issue of safety oversight. Some of our future aviators may not be that familiar with what safety oversight is. Marli, you were in the regional office of ICAO uh, for quite a few years which is very closely involved with safety oversight. You don't do it for the countries, right? It's the countries themselves that have to perform the safety oversight? No, well, ICAO does the, the oversight, the yeah. audits, uh, but it's, of course, the states themselves that uh, will, will work on the findings. And uh, I think it was a huge step for when ICAO launched the safety uh, oversight program in 1999. And a couple of years later, I joined the regional office um, in Nairobi of ICAO. And uh, I tagged along on those audits and I learned a lot. And I think for states uh, to, to have a list of findings, uh, to see where to start yeah. um, 
working on and, and um, I think also it helped them very much uh, to implement uh, SARPs better, the standard uh, and recommended practices from okay. IKO. Uh, so I think that was a huge step for states, well, they got more help. And they knew where to focus their attention on. Yeah. And I think also, uh, Nana, you mentioned before that uh, in the discussions we had beforehand that, uh, yes, you were a new entrant in the industry, but you did see, if you look back in the history of Ghana, that uh, these audits initially uh, presented a difficult situation for Ghana. Definitely. But it helped the government to move forward, isn't it? De definitely. I think that um, some of these initiatives by ICAO has indeed spared on the government, particularly in Ghana, to take aviation safety very seriously, considering, like you said, the history of Ghana with some of the, the outcomes of these audits. The initial audits. Uh, the initial yeah, audits yeah. and the fact that aviation seems to continuously take a center stage in the economy of Ghana. You have the, the current you know, government trying to have an aviation ministry specifically focused for aviation and quite a number of initiatives trying to you know, convert local airports into uh, to international standards. And all of these things bring the discussion of safety to the forefront again, because then you have to meet international best practices. And it all weaves into a very, you know, the, 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 the story at the end of the day that we do not have to get complacent. We've come a long way yeah. and we have to also look at keeping these standards whilst looking at the future. Pursuing, yeah, the future, which is people like you. I mean, uh, I to speak for myself, I'm <laughs> becoming a wase or mze soon. Uh, <laughs> So is, is that, is that a, I mean, I think if, if we would sit down uh, after the broadcast, you know, with a beer with Chamzu and Marali, we'd have many stories of, of what we have done and what we've visited, the places we've seen. Is it exciting for you to start in this domain? Because you're fairly fresh, isn't it? Yes, um, for me, I, my, my motivation to come in into aviation was, I, I think, discussions we've had previously <laughs> had nothing. I never dreamt of, you know, a career in aviation. It was an opportunity. So you were not that boy somewhere in the corner. No, God, I never be dreamt of being a pilot. Or, okay. I mean, I, I dreamt of being a lawyer, but <laughs> not into specific. <laughs> not you know with specific specialization or focus into aviation. And um, in the course of my practice back home in Ghana, I had to do some advisory work for a domestic airline that had gone defunct, and um, we're trying to find new investors. And in the process, I had discussions with um, the regulators and other lawyers, and I realized that in terms of the human capital when it comes to aviation, yeah. the focus mainly in Ghana is on the technical side of it. But in terms of compliance and regulatory stuff, we had it was a bit lacking. And so for me, it was one of the reasons why I decided, even though I'm more of into private aviation or commercial yeah, yeah. aviation, my your... exposure to public air law and issues of public safety, security, has actually been a motivation for me. And I'm working on, you know, thesis in cybersecurity and safety and how IKEO is trying to, you know, bridge the fragmented approach to yeah, yeah. safety issues in in, in cybersecurity. Well, um, welcome to our industry. Thank you, I mean, thank yeah. you. And I don't know if, if it's anything, it was the same for Marley as it was for me, but when I started law school, yeah. I didn't even know air and space law existed. True. Oh. You know, it's, by chance, I came across it. But what I think is interesting for the viewers, especially the younger ones, there are so many interesting careers out there, not just, you know, with all due respect, but not just engineering or piloting <laughs> or, or law. Or, or yeah, that's true. Crew, but yeah. yeah, that's true. When people think of uh, aviation, they think pilot, uh, cabin crew, yeah. the maintenance technician. But uh, uh, Nana is an example of uh, <laughs> that this diversity breed. and any actually aviation embraces all careers. There is a diverse, a, a wide array of uh, careers that uh, aviation embraces. Um, I have a friend. We worked together at Boeing. He was a psychologist, and mm -hmm. he, yeah. he helped the industry a lot, uh, we, we developing the uh, human well, factors yeah. uh, issues. Uh, you have uh, uh, business, of course, uh, biz business managers, and a lot of people can find their way within aviation. Yeah, and it's easily forgotten, indeed. Yes. It's just um, 
Because you mentioned the, the, the sort of three pillars in particular, Chamzu, I think, that you saw change, the safety oversight, the industry cooperation with the government. If we try to think of some key people that, that played a role, I don't know if anybody around the table thinks, oh, this is a person I met who I felt was really a, a driver of safety. Well, I think uh, uh, the, the name that comes to my mind who uh, is someone from IKEA who helped uh, spearhead in Africa this uh, IKEA uh, commitment yeah. to build the relationship, to develop first the capabilities and to build the relationship with the with industry, the industry yeah. it will be Aile Belai. Captain Belai. Captain yeah. Belai. From Ethiopia. From Ethiopian, yeah. who led the Africa plan of IKEA for some time. Yeah. Another name that came to my mind would be Dr. Demoren in Nigeria. Dr. Who, Harold Demoren. Yeah. Harold Demoren, who really changed the way the oversight system in, in, in Nigeria. In Nigeria. Yeah. Because uh, they came from a very dark place yes, in Nigeria. Yes, and I yes. think what I find interesting of... of but there are, few, there, are, there are a few of them. Eh? There in, are many more. There are many more. Yeah. In Ghana, you can cite uh, uh, Manson, uh, Ed, Ed, isn't it Edward, Edward Manson? Okay. Uh, he was at IKEA as well. You remember him? Uh, no, I, I don't. Know. Might have been. No. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, and and then um, uh, even uh, uh, Captain um, who was at Ghana Airways, who, who was this uh, Ghana Civil Aviation Authority at that time, he achieved actually the highest le uh, level that you were mentioning. Of those uh, standards. Oh, yeah. I forgot his name. And you know what? What, I, what yeah. I remember from some of the names you mentioned, like Captain Haile Belai, Doctor Demuran. I'm also thinking of people like Alex Avedi, who nowadays works as the CEO of uh, Safari Link in Kenya. They were all pretty outspoken people, isn't it? Which they, they sometimes were really telling the truth, things as they were. That's how I remember them. Did you work with Captain Belay or? No, I did not. But uh, I mean, one person who comes to my mind is uh, sitting at this table. Oh. I mean, we have Tom Cock, who is the <laughs> biggest promoter of safety I agree with aviation that. Yeah. of, of all time. <laughs> Yeah, he did and a good course, job on that front as well, yeah, for, since yeah. 95. Yeah, and there are many, I mean, there are so many uh, people. I think all the people I've worked with, uh, yeah. if, if you're in aviation, it becomes a passion. Yeah, and, uh, or you leave it, one of the two. Yeah. Or you leave it, but... But you see, I, I appreciate the compliment, and we didn't uh, <laughs> plan this beforehand, but I think I have to agree with... Uh, particularly Professor, uh, President Kagame of Rwanda, the solutions in the end will have to come from Africa. From of course. Africa. Definitely. Of so course. all Definitely. we can do, and you've been part of that for a long time, Marily, as well, is try to be a catalyst to, to speed it up. Mm -hmm. But we have to look at, you know, yeah. of course. the nanas of this world, <laughs> not just lawyers. And they're yeah. doing Definitely. it. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Definitely. In fact, we asked if, you know, Africa through the social media channels, are there any people in Africa that you think go beyond the call of duty, uh, that don't just do safety because they have to. And we got a few nominations, so I want to give them a shout out for their work, because these are people not of the past, but of the future. Mm. Uh, one of them was, uh, or is, Andrew Wabuire, who is the um, safety manager of the Soroti Aviation School, the East African Aviation School in Soroti. He was nominated by people from Uganda saying, you know, this is somebody who goes beyond what he has to do and really has this, this passion you spoke about, uh, yeah. uh, Marie-Lee. Yeah. Uh, I also think of um, people who are in function now. You know, Safari Link uh, has Bruce Mugabe, somebody who's uh, probably of in between your and my age, you know, so a new generation. Yeah, uh, yeah that's, that's, those are the people we need, I think, isn't it? How do we get more of those people, Jamzu, of those Passionate cheetahs, as we call them with obviously safety cheetahs. It's about education, it's about training, continuous training, and uh, making people understand that, uh, uh, give them a sense of uh, purpose. You know, uh, when you come to aviation, it's not only, not only about a job, it's about the contribution that you can make to other aspects of your life, economic, social development, of the continent, so we don't talk enough about that. So I think we should attract people, let them know that they can contribute in their ways to a better development of the environment. And uh, aviation Country. is about connecting people 
and some, uh, solving problems that wouldn't be otherwise possible, like uh, humanitarian aviation, for yeah, instance. Yeah. Like a lot of things that you can contribute to. So that's one. And second, uh, demystify the aviation as a cluster of experts. Or, uh, Is that uh, not the case? Is it not a cluster of experts? No, no, it's, it's embraced the world. Uh, you see, uh, Nana is an example. <laughs> if, he were, if it was a cluster of uh, those pilots and technicians, and yeah, yeah. yeah. he would never have come yeah. to it. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so we need to talk more about that and start uh, talking outside of our own perimeter, talking to people outside. So that's outside aviation. Outside aviation. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, because I think that was an important thing which those IK audits also brought. It helped the CEAs to get more support from ministers of finance, etc. Because before that, people would say, well, it's just the Department of Civil Aviation who says this is important, but is it really? And now they got an independent organization, the United Nations, ICAO, who did those orders. So that's, I think, also, Marilyn, you know, something which probably provided ammunition for the professionals to do more. Yeah, I think so. I was just support. talking to Chanzu before uh, the broadcast, and um, we were discussing the, how states would struggle or CAAs would struggle to find money to to um, to deal with all the, the problems and implementations they had to do. And then they would find the money elsewhere, not within the state. And, and of course, that has brought different problems to the table. As in getting loans to get things funded, etc. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I think that's also something we can discuss a little bit later on, that the change of you know, 60 years ago, even when I started, 27 years, 28 years ago, there were departments of civil aviation who didn't retain any of their revenue. All the revenue would go to the Ministry of Finance, who would then you know, send it to education, healthcare, very laudable courses, but not back into, uh, into the industry. In a moment, I hope we can go um, to a live link in, uh, in Nairobi um, and, and find out what they've been doing there in terms of the lunch lectures. Because one of the things we're very excited of launching this year on Africa Day is uh, simultaneous safety lunches taking place where people share their, um, their experience and their ideas. From, again, like you said, with industry and government taking place at the same lunch table. We've termed it uh, eat, laugh and lunch, basically. Mm -hmm. So the idea is not for it to be very serious, a bit like here. <laughs> so I don't know if we have uh, currently already a lifeline with uh, Nairobi, Winnie Ongiri, uh, if she's available on the line. Uh, if not, oh, hang on, there's something coming through, I think. It's not an hour cut. Yeah. So, what we're hoping to establish is uh, the audio as well with uh, Nairobi uh, for a quick report of uh, the lunch lecture that is going to be taking place later in the afternoon. If we don't, uh, we don't seem to have a live link in the audio at the moment, so we'll try and see if we can come back to uh, Nairobi a little bit later in the broadcast. So let's, let's talk about... Um, this issue then, uh, Chamzu, of uh, transitions from DCA's Department of Civil Aviation to Civil Aviation Authorities. Has that changed the landscape, I think, like Marley was suggesting? Yes, it has uh, uh, given more power to the civil aviation authorities. And I, I have also to complement, to commend uh, ICAO's, uh, ICAO on this, to really push governments to give more autonomy to civil aviation authorities, so it has... Autonomy played. meaning what? Autonomy, autonomy means uh, no interference in their decision-making, support for finance for finances when, when needed, and uh, uh, so, so that now the, the, it empowered the, the DG or civil aviation authorities. Now, we have also to consider that uh, uh, when uh, you look at the aviation in Africa landscape, we talked about it uh, last time, there are only very few countries that can afford to have a very uh, full-fledged civil aviation authorities, maybe five to seven. To perform them, that safety perform oversight function. To perform that safety yeah. oversight function properly. So you're saying and only seven, approximately seven out of the 54? Out of the 54. 55, 54. Yeah. So there is a need for cooperative mm -hmm. approach somewhere. And 
I, I, I dream of the day where <laughs> in uh, all those uh, 47 countries, you will have a DG plus a secretary and a contract between he, this, him and the regional safety of Assad organization. So regionalization, cooperation yes. between the smaller yes. countries and with the smaller aviation. To fulfill the oversight function. Because if you don't have the activity to support uh, the, your oversight function, you, can, you can't make it. And you cannot have autonomy and still depend on state for your functioning. functioning. So, one or the other. Uh, so you, there, there is a need for cooperation between state and regional safety oversight organization in an efficient way where you just keep the minimal capability in-house and uh, outsource, outsource to the regional organization. And we've seen some successes there, right? Yeah, Africa, it, it, like it, uh, East Africa, Kosovo, the civil aviation safety But there is no, there is no such big outsourcing. It's still a lot of duplication that needs to be improved. But uh, it's, not, it's, it's not easy. It's what is easier. the reason for that? And actually, today we're celebrating the successes, of course. Yeah. Not so much, not so much uh, yeah. the challenges, because there but are a lot the of The success things. is that the, those organizations are there. Yeah. yeah. Now we hope to make it work efficiently by streamlining the national uh, organization that, have, that cannot be fully fledged. Because the industry in and, those countries is too small to sustain. Yeah, and increasing the cooperation with the regional safety oversight organization to maintain that safety oversight capability. Uh, um, Tom, if yes, I could yes. come in, um, maybe just um, to give perspective to what Chamzu was saying. I think even in Ghana, one of the things I noticed was that at the point the CA was in charge of the airports and the regulatory function. And then subsequently, uh, I think after an IKO-supported um, effort, uh, effort um, I think it was headed by John Baffo. There was, um, you know, separation of the function of regulating the airport. So now we have Ghana Airport Company. Even with air navigation, there's also been a separation from the CA so that the CA can focus a lot more on, you know, the functions of safety and all of that. So I think, just to add to what Chamzu is saying, if, and, if, back to the point about retention of some of the revenue. Mm -hmm. I think that's also one of the things that has been done by way of legislation in Ghana, where the CA now is able to retain a certain percentage, even yeah. though a chunk of it still goes to the Ministry of Finance. But because they are able to retain a certain percentage, it gives them that a certain level to an extent yeah. of autonomy to be able to prioritize what they think is important. Train staff exactly. Exactly. Uh, and actually, speaking of equipment, I think another improvement which has uh, really changed is uh, the in-flight broadcasting procedure, the IFBP, where IATA says, you know, over those countries in this airspace, we don't really uh, trust the air traffic control, so they broadcast blind on a particular frequency. If you look at the map for that, the IFBP map, it has completely shrunk over the last 20 years, mm. isn't it, in terms of... VHF yeah, radio coverage, etc. Yes, there, is a, there have been a lot of uh, improvement also in the infrastructure and navigation infrastructures. Uh, uh, now we're talking about uh, PBN, oh, uh, <laughs> performance-based <laughs> navigation. So more satellite-based, yes, etc. Right? Yeah, and more, more, more uh, less dependency on ground uh, support, which uh, maintenance can be sometimes difficult. Uh, there have been. Um, Improvement at the airport facility, the way we, the, the way passengers are, are tracked, are handled. So, so the, the, I think we are, we have a lot to celebrate. Mm. Yeah. yeah, I agree indeed. And also the satellite navigation. I mean, more and satellite, more countries in yeah. Africa, it uses the term PBN then, but I mean, basically, it's less reliant on those navigational beacons on the yeah. ground. Because I think it's easy to forget, especially from viewers from outside Africa, who have perhaps never been to Africa, how huge that beautiful continent is, isn't it? Yeah. So if you have a navigational beacon in a far-flung corner of the country yeah. to maintain it, to give it you know, power supply, how is that with Ghana? Um, I think size what, what, in terms of size, but I think in terms of the um, advancement in the technology, um, if my memory serves me well, I know there's an agreement you between... You have no excuse, and because you're not, <laughs> you're not old yet, so you, you can't say no, that. But um, with Ghana, I think Togo and Cote d'Ivoire, there's an agreement where Ghana takes charge of some um, of the 
I've forgotten the term, you know. I found. Yes. Ghana is in control, I think, on the southern part of it. They rely on, I think, the, the systems in Ghana. And like Shamsu was saying, because of we need a lot more cooperation, if you, maybe in another state they do not have the, those facilities, that capability. That cooperation yeah. also helps to boost, you know, the the aviation safety oversight in, in general. So I think that the cooperation is also very important. And considering the state, Ghana is a really small state, but we're really trying to, you know, make a lot of improvement in aviation because we've come to believe that, and which is true, I mean, the statistics show that aviation is actually one of the ways through which the economies would blossom. Mm. So I think the investment by the state as we speak should not just be about, you know, the infrastructure, airports, but safety, because yeah. that's what IKEO stands for. And people as well, of course. The people. I mean, definitely. I hear a proud Ghanaian speaking. That's <laughs> very nice to see. Now, when we mention this point of people, I think it also brings me to Marili again. At this table, we have 25% uh, uh, women at the table. So from a diversity perspective, we are doing somewhat well. But how is that for you, Marili? And what do you see in terms of, have you seen more women enter into Aviation. Never That's enough, of course. Perfect question. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think when I started uh, a little bit more than 20 years ago uh, in Nairobi, I was always the only woman at the table. And um, what I see now is um, women pilots, women safety managers, mm. airport directors. So I think that has been a huge development and, um, and also Chamzu just told me that uh, now that Mr. Kashambo has uh, retired, there is a new lady appointed. Really? As yeah. regional, regional director for the IKO uh, office in Nairobi. So yeah, it, it makes me really happy and I think... Um, I think uh, women in uh, aviation are, yeah, it's, it's growing. There are more and more women who find their uh, positions and, and they deserve it. Uh, so, yeah, I'm really happy with that. With that change. Yeah. And I think also, you know, for me, for a long time, I found it difficult to understand the reason of getting more women into the industry. For, what, I, for whatever reason, I was always feeling like I was obsessed with women. But then I... You I, were. I, I, I were. <laughs> I am, I guess. But I found this very nice... Um, uh, sentence from a big financial firm in London who actually said uh, that homogeneity, so the opposite of this diversity, promotes mediocrity and conformity. Mm. And so that's what we, you don't want in any industry, because no. people just all agree with each other. So I think this diversity is, is very... So that helped me, so to say, to, to be an even bigger champion of trying to get... Uh, yeah. We nowadays, for example, at the center in Rwanda, we try to positively discriminate to get more, in this case, students, female students, yeah. into uh, the industry. Do you see anything along those lines? Yes, um, um, and it comes back to, I think, an earlier point that Shamsu made about education and the fact that we have to be able to demystify the fact that the technical job in aviation is not gender specific. Mm -hmm. I think over a long period of time, you found a lot of um, the uh, males or men in that area and with the education comes the broaden of people's perspective and on the horizon for instance in ghana now you have um the ceo of the ghana airport company is a woman ghana's representative at ikeo is a woman, woman yeah, as well so i think it's not just about promoting it but what the people involved the individuals do when they get there Mm -hmm. They also have that honors or that responsibility. If a woman achieves that exactly, position to lead to, by, by exactly, example. And yeah. to get a lot of people, you know, involved. Because at the end of the day, in as much as we are talking about it, there's still that part of it that somebody has to take a step. We can make the noise, create the awareness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But <laughs> and say we have to do it. But when you are in that position, I think you are in a better position to lead the course or to charge it. So you're, you're almost putting a task with those Definitely. people. Definitely. Yeah. I, I, I think mean, that is important. A good example, actually, is our own foundation's uh, board member, Harriet uh, Angetile. Uh, she's now the managing director of Lusaka International Airport, uh, also known as uh, Kenneth Kaunda International Airport, after the first president, yeah. who was part of this pan-African drive that led to the start of the African Union. Yeah. And if you follow uh, Harriet on social media, LinkedIn, you see that she does a lot of outreach to get uh, 
girls and young women yeah. Yeah. into the industry, you know, and yeah. to, sometimes also, I guess, be a, you mentioned um, training new people, uh, Chamzu, but sometimes also mentoring yeah. people because what I hear from Harriet is sometimes those younger girls find it difficult because they find themselves in a male-dominated dom environment. And sometimes men are old-fashioned, you know, and they think, oh, that must be the secretary or something like that. So it's a worldwide problem. Yeah. And it's Definitely. compounded in Africa by, uh, by, by uh, cult culture, I would say. Uh, in, in which way? Uh, because uh, in Africa, women are most... Uh, uh, mostly uh, domestic activities oriented, educated for, well, it has changed a lot, but it's still a long way to go. Oh. And then um, uh, now, now if, if you see that uh, even in education, women are, tend to be more uh, oriented to laws, uh, uh, economy, business, not much to STEM. Science, science, technology, technology yeah. what's Egan? Uh, <laughs> engineering, I think, engineering, and math, and that's and the, math, STEM, and yeah. mathematics. Yeah. Yes, there are less women in that area, and that's a, an area where we should put an effort to encourage. And they are very good at it, actually, when they when yeah. they go, because they initially they think that they can't because it's a man thing. But when they get in there, they are very good, and they are even they, are, they perform very well. So we should encourage that. And actually there I want to mention uh, YACA, the um, um, Young Aviators Community of Africa. I forgot the exact expression, but YACA, this is Mercy Macau in, uh, in Kenya, who helped us also with uh, the lectures in Nairobi. She uh, goes out to lots of schools uh, to promote aviation in general, but specifically also to try and get more women into uh, aviation, making it more diverse and moving away from this homogeneity, you know, of just people. I'm normally, I also wear a suit, but for today I thought, you know, <laughs> we change up, but men in suit, move away from that. Again, also, I think, you know, going back to uh, my first contact, for example, in Africa was uh, Margaret Munyagi, uh, who later became the Director General of the Tanzanian Civil Aviation Authority, a female engineer. So they have been there, yeah. but not in the numbers, I guess, you in particular, but also we would want to see them. Yeah, yeah, but it's changing for the good. Yes. And, uh, and especially, uh, again, to mention the, the new regional director of the Nairobi uh, ICAO office. This is office. Me, which is brilliant. It's, she's the first woman globally. In any regional office? In any regional wow. office. So, so that's really uh, something. And I think, uh, yeah, it's a good development. We yeah. like it. We like it. I hope in a moment we'll have a link with uh, Lagos in Nigeria, uh, but I'm happy to take the line from Nairobi as well if they are, <laughs> have meanwhile re-established. Um, like I said, to, to um, give us an update on, on the lunch lectures taking place there. Uh, they either have taken place because of the time difference or that are taking place shortly. And the idea of those lunch lectures is, and we want to organize them across Africa soon, uh, from next year onwards, is to show that you know there is a brother and sisterhood of aviation safety professionals. You're not alone if you work in an airport in safety management or in an airline in safety management. Um, so um, I'm not. I'm just looking at uh, whether we have a line at the moment or not. We have Nairobi on Hello. the line. So then we have uh, Winnie Ongiri, one of the future aviators, uh, who is. Uh, Giving us a short report, Vini, what's going to happen in Nairobi in a moment? Hello and welcome to Avias' first edition safety lunch lectures across Africa. Reporting from Nairobi, my name is Vini Ongeri. So today is Africa Day and gathered here we have safety professionals who will be tackling different topics related to aviation safety. We'll be having uh, Sheila speaking about attraction and retention of talent in the aviation sector. Uh, we'll have Hussein speaking about risk management in aviation, and we'll have Mr. Mbogo talking about safety in unmanned aerial systems. Thank you so much, and a big, big, big thank you to Aviasist for organizing this, and we hope that this is a success. Stay tuned. <laughs> thank you very much, Winnie, there from Nairobi. Great to have you there. Um, so, Marli, this, was, this is a little bit your Nairobi. Actually, it's also a little bit Chamzu's Nairobi. <laughs> But uh, yeah, this is the new generation. Eh? Winnie has graduated in aeronautical engineering and is now hoping to enter the uh, industry. 
which is not always um, easy. No. Because there is sometimes a mismatch between what the schools teach and what, you know, the jobs that, that are out there. But again, it's great to see that, uh, that pick up of uh, those schools. So, uh, yeah, like I said, hopefully we'll find more organizations who are willing to host a small lunch lecture. We want no more than 15 true safety cheetahs at those events. So it's not going to be uh, a Sheraton hotel meeting with uh, 150 people having lunch at the expense of AVSIS. <laughs> it will be people that, you know, we feel from, you know, sounding from uh, things we pick up from people like yourself and across mm -hmm. Africa. These are people that, that are our safety cheetahs. Unfortunately, the gentleman who invented the concept of cheetahs, he's, he was a Ghanaian actually, oh. uh, mm. Professor George Aitai, Aitai okay. and uh, he, he recently passed away, but he, he made up this concept of cheetahs versus hippos, where hippos are people that look at the government for solutions, and the cheetahs say, I can't wait for that, you know, I have to make my own mark. So um, that's what we're looking for. I think we're about to establish the line um, with uh, Nigeria as well, Lagos. Uh, I'm again waiting for a cue from the team here, the wonderful team here in the studio on Africa Day, uh, on whether we have, yeah, we have a, a live link now with Patrick Odiasa, uh, all the way in Lagos. Uh, Patrick, you're also having a, a lunch lecture there today at Overland Airways, kindly sponsored by Overland Airways. Tell us about it. What's going to happen? Uh, good day, Tom, and everyone at the studio. Um, live from Lagos, Nigeria, we're having the Avia Six Month Lecture. Um, at Overland Airways, um, hosted um, with um, other airlines. We have attendees from Arik Air, Medview. Uh, we have attendees from Jet Air. And uh, the atmosphere is filled with um, knowledge about um, aviation safety. Uh, pardon me to say um, happy Africa Day. And uh, being the first initiative, we hope to see more of this um, in the future. Uh, being a yearly, being a yearly, uh, uh, events where we can share ideas and um, also learn. We are laughing, we are learning, and uh, it's a beautiful environment. Thank you very much. Great, uh, Patrick. Thanks for your report there from, uh, from Lagos. And again, very grateful also for Overland to want to join this, uh, this journey with us because it's new for us. But I hope that in the years to come, like I said, you know, next year, 25th, May we have eight locations in Africa. Maybe we should work on on Ghana. Definitely, you have to. Are you are you actually going back to Ghana? What's the plan? Um, so for me, um, the plan is eventually to go back to Ghana. I want to be involved a lot more in policy decision when it comes to aviation. But until then, I'm also open to an international experience. Okay. So that whatever it is that in terms of the human capital we are lacking back home. I'm able to get that experience. And because policy making is where everything starts from, because if those who are in charge do not have the right advice from people who know and understand, like you said, in the past it was, oh, why should we put so much money in aviation? But when they have people who have understood, like people like Chamzu, who if they're legal uh, advisors to governments back home, it they understand, they've lived it. So they're able to maybe make a good case. And so that's what I want to do eventually when I go back home. But for now, it's um, uh, I'm open to opportunities where I have internships in other parts of um, the world. And the idea is to get all that experience and then at some point go back home and contribute <clears throat> to you know building that story of safe aviation back home in Ghana. So you will not leave our industry, it sounds like, for the time being. Anyway. No, 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 I'm here to stay. <laughs> here to stay. Well, we'd love to hear that, of course. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Actually, my, myself, when I started from, uh, from school, my plan was to stay in f five years and do my own things. And 40 years later, I was in. <laughs> I was so you were planning to leave aviation or just use yeah, it yeah, as a stepping stone? Yeah, yeah. I, was, uh, I thought that in, within five years, I would be down and move to other venture and 40 years uh, later I was still in <laughs> and I'm still in you're still in yes absolutely. today so <laughs> yeah. I wish you a very long career <laughs> <laughs> because I mean in the end of course the nice thing is and uh, maybe you know Marilee and Shamsu can also look back at it, the nice thing is also of this career also for people in Africa it usually brings long travel you know you get to see places that then you have other jobs where that's possible but um, mm. yeah it's a very dynamic 
environment. But then again, I always think everybody says out of their environment. You know, when you're a nurse, you say it's very dynamic. But yes, here we are stuck in aviation, so we better <laughs> we better make it <laughs> fun, I guess. Yeah, yeah. true. And uh, now I also mentioned the introduction. You know, how how are we looking after ourselves? How do we look after the people in aviation? The, one of the silver linings, I guess, perhaps, of the corona crisis has been a much bigger attention, much more attention for mental health, for you know how we look after the human factor in the equation. Uh, Marley, you've been involved in some of the activities we've done in Avia, with Avia Assist in Africa. Have you sort of, from the sideline perhaps, but noticed a shift in, in the attention for the human in the system? Yeah, I think also, uh, not just in Africa, but globally, uh, there has been a lot of attention uh, for mental health uh, in pilots and aircrew, but also for people on the ground. I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's important for everyone who works in aviation to, to, uh, yeah, to be monitored and, and to be in good mental health. And I think with the trainings that did not exist yet in Africa, uh, I think it's very important uh, that we raise awareness especially, and, and uh, with that awareness, people started to think, yeah, it can really impact safety, aviation safety. So I think, yes. A change, uh, yeah. Yeah, quite a change. Yeah, and I also think, I think, Chamzu, you mentioned in, the, in your you know, opening statement almost, you know, psychology, we have our own psychologist as Avia Assist nowadays in the center in Rwanda. It again shows that there are so many other jobs in aviation. I think what's also nice maybe if people have a more a broader training, for example, as a psychologist, they are not necessarily limited to aviation in case the aviation industry experiences a dip or something. They, they have transferable skills. Uh. Yeah, that's an important point, the transferability or the employability in uh, other industry, because uh, unfortunately in Africa, the aviation industry is quite uh, uh, limited. It's about 3% of the global aviation system uh, for a huge population. So it's, the opportunities are quite limited. But the skills that we need in the industry are also used in other yeah. industries. So we can develop those skills and as aviation grow, bring them in as necessary. So I think a good example is also the IT world, yeah, that's really changed now that there's lots of co digital data collected also in Africa. Mm -hmm. Somebody has to do something with that. I remember uh, Edward Jumi from Kenya Airways, he's nowadays with, with IATA. Mm -hmm. He was involved in, in uh, Kenya Airways, yeah. you know, with all the digital data collected nowadays from aircraft, even if there's no accident, just regular operations mm -hmm. to process that and to use that data. So I think that's also a, a great opportunity for the, the IT interested people out there to still join Aviation. And, and exactly. just to add to what you're saying, um, with the emergence of cyber security, you have a lot of people, you know, from IT backgrounds going into cyber risk assessment and, you know, airlines are relying on these and these are skills that are not limited only to aviation, but into every system. Once, I mean, you have, you're using technology or digital systems, you would have a need for cyber security and cyber safety. So, uh, like you're saying, the, the skills that those skill sets that we pick up should be able to be transferred into other yeah. industries so that you well. don't get disappointed if you maybe don't get immediate exactly. employment yeah exactly yeah. And a good example is also uh, uh, Winnie reported from Nairobi about one of the presentations they're going to be listening to shortly over lunch is um, about drones yeah which is again completely digitally fed you know, yeah. so all, all done yeah. by by data <clears throat> so in that respect there are uh, it seems there are plenty of opportunities Oh yes, and uh, air transport is even uh, changing. The, the industry that we know today um, may change drastically in the next uh, 20 years where uh, we get closer to the need of the people. Uh, where, okay. Yeah, uh, when people want to travel, they don't necessarily want to be in a 100 seat airplane. No. Yeah. They, 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 they want to go from point A to point B. It just happened that there is no 
technical solution to satisfy that need. Maybe the, tomorrow okay. there will be such technical solution. Would that not be a disappointment for you as a former <laughs> Boeing man? You want to maybe have Boeing aircraft? will be in that space. Or maybe we will now, now I'm retired from yeah, Boeing, yeah, so, you so can speak I'm, freely. <laughs> I'm more independent. But they are, they are working on the, on, that, on on those solutions to yeah. uh, look for uh, innovative mobility solutions. You, you mentioned the drones that already uh, help address uh, some issues on the cargo. Uh, there, are, there are some uh, applications already on, on cargo. I don't expect to be to have so, the application in in, in uh, passengers, but, no, no, but why not? Yeah, you yeah, know, there is a lot yeah. of opportunity. I mean, Rwanda is and leading in in drones in Africa. I think Malawi has also started up a, yeah, like a zipline. Ghana, 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 Ghana with, with a zipline. Yeah, uh, with yeah. medical supply. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For medical supply yeah. and yeah, trying yeah. to meet some of the SDGs. Yeah, so the SDG uh, being the sustainable, uh, sustainable development, development goals. goals. Yeah. And so you lawyers will, like abbreviations. <laughs> <laughs> so you see how even with the drones and un unmanned aircraft, you it's still helping the society, not necessarily within just aviation, but social problems as well. Yeah. 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 And, so, and employment opportunities. Yeah. That's, so that's the, interesting. Definitely. The skills that are needed to, to meet those requirements will be different from what they are yeah. today. So we just need to be adaptive, to, to, to be open, to listen, and to, ad to adapt quickly to, to the reality. Uh, and uh, digitalization is something you can, we, we can't do without. No. A lot of data that uh, comes to us to, in our own life, in uh, aviation is now a comp computers flying, you know, so there's a lot of data that are generated that needs to be processed quickly. And, 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 Why? Uh, Why does it need to be processed? To be for for uh, efficiency uh, and safety, uh, and safety yeah. uh, because the the, the 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 plane stock the, the, when there is a problem they communicate yeah. but we don't hear it because we don't know, we, we we don't capture the information no. yeah. enough. Or it takes too long it for takes us to too get long the data. Yeah. So yeah. with the technologies that are developing where we have low latency system for instance you can capture quickly the information that gets from an airplane uh, send it to the uh, mechanics uh, and, yeah. and prepare the solution or even have the solution while you are flying there are maybe some yeah. things that you yeah. can do or you can get the feedback so a, a lot of things will change and uh, we haven't seen it yet so <laughs> <laughs> We will look back at it later with yes. uh, a walking stick yeah. and then, uh, <laughs> then admire uh, the progress of <laughs> Nana and, and yeah. Winnie and people like exactly. that. Exactly. Yeah. Now, we, we, like I said before, we've also asked, you know, in Africa, who do you think uh, deserves a shout out in this program so because of the contribution they made? We also had a nomination from uh, Ethiopia by Elias, who nominated uh, Captain Lil Avata, who was the captain who um, saved the passengers of an airliner from Ethiopia in the 80s that was hijacked and oh, yeah. he crashed, successfully crashed to some extent, you know, as far as a crash can be successful, successful of course, yeah. but in the sea. Uh, and I understood Captain Abate currently still trains at the oh. Ethiopian Aviation Academy. That's good. Uh, oh, wow. That's also something actually jumps with this change, isn't it? The amount of training facilities. Yes. And that what before happens before uh, to, to train pe people, uh, you have to send them to Europe, US, and now uh, on the continent, you have world-class facilities. Uh, you can mention in the north, um, Tunisia, uh, Royal Maroc, Egypt, uh, Sub-Saharan Africa, you have Ethiopian Academy, you have Kenya Pride Center, you have South Africa. South Africa yeah. facility. So, and gives, that gives uh, uh, opportunities to Africans to, uh, to be trained at home. At the, at the same, at the world-class level, and it's more economic, it's uh, more affordable, and uh, so it's good. And I think it's Ethiopian Airlines Academy trains something like 4,000 people a year in different domains, yes, of course. Yes, yes, yeah. around that. Thing. A lot of them is for their own needs, of yes, course, Ethiopian, yes, and they're also going yes, into yes, Ghana and other yes, places, yes, but, yes. Uh, but they have those facilities. And I was privileged to be there, uh, I don't know, four or yeah. five years ago or something, and it was, yes. I was yeah. taken so, aback by how... So it's a huge yeah. investment, that, uh, but it's, I think it's paid off. Yeah. It's paying off. Very inspiring. So that's another thing to celebrate, yeah. the progress in, in, in all those training academies. Uh, we have some more legacy training institutions, like um, 
the Civil Aviation Training Center in, in Tanzania that trains maintenance technicians for uh, radars, for navigational beacons, but we also have those sort of new entrants, if you like, over the last 15, 20 years, yeah. who are um, yeah, great successes to, to be proud of, I think, for everybody out there uh, watching. So it is possible. Yes. Even though, of course, places like Ethiopia are separate in terms that they have one of those bigger aviation industries, yeah. one of the seven countries, more or less, you spoke about that have a strong industry. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, I think maybe like you suggested, Nana, in terms of the cooperation or navigation that takes place between several countries, maybe that's also a way forward for the training where you, yeah. you use what you have on the continent. Yeah. I think it makes um, it a lot more indigenous because in as much as aviation is global and standardized, or that's the focus to try and get a standardized you know, playing field, once you come up with, let's say, training schools within the continent with trainers or instructors who, even though maybe have had their training elsewhere, but are African, they understand the problems maybe a little more. Because if you are taking someone from, say, Ghana or Nigeria to study in the EU, any part of the EU, it may be standardized, but maybe on the ground, the practicality of it is different. Yeah. So once we're able to have corporations, you know, where you're taking people from Ghana to train in Tanzania, in Ethiopia, some of these problems are a bit, you know, generic in the continent. And so it gives you that indigenous, you know... So we have to Africanize a little bit Africanize more. it, yeah. yeah. And, 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 I th and I always hold to the belief that whatever it is which is international, when you are trying to implement or adapt it, you should always have that African yeah. touch to it because... It's, that's that's where we we part ways with other parts of the continent or the world, so I think it, it works best in that way when there's a lot more cooperation, yeah. and then we get to also understand what's happening in other parts of the region. And that's also something we as aviators have to do better at. And eh? you have been uh, lambasting me about that as well, and rightly so. That we have to, you know, a lot of our volunteers are from Europe, you know. Uh, and we spend actually quite some time, Marilee and I, in the past as well, when we go on mission to tell them a lot about the environment they go into. Uh, but still, it's not the same, like you said. If, if somebody who is from Africa will, in some respects, have a better rapport, I guess. Connection, or, yeah. Yeah, connection with them. So there's a challenge there. Uh, it's not just, I see it as an opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> For the Africans. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there are so much to do that uh, you can't go wrong. <laughs> just do it. <laughs> yeah, and, and that's, yeah, exactly. And, uh, and I think we've also been working, partially inspired by you, to get more African volunteers in the work we do. Yeah. Um, so. When I was in Nairobi uh, in March, uh, we visited the Pride Center, mm -hmm. uh, the Kenya Airways Pride Center. F very inspiring. All those, I think we must have seen, I went there with the uh, board chairman of Avias is Christopher McGregor. Mm -hmm. And probably at the time we were there, there must have been about 250, 300 people being trained in different classrooms, different disciplines, some just out of high school, 18 yeah. years old. Yeah. Um, and we asked there, you know, to the instructors, would you want to be a volunteer for Avia Assist? And a lot of them said, yes, we'd love to, because the downside of being a volunteer is there's no financial gain. You know, you make a nice adventure, and Marily, <laughs> you've been on... Uh, Quite some of those uh, adventures. Many adventures, <laughs> yes. Yeah, Tell actually, us about it. actually, we we've organized also a training at the Pride Center. Yeah. Uh, a very nice building. It is, yeah, very. And nice. what I what I mostly like about trainings because I I just um, did a training in Berlin uh, on heliports. Uh, yeah, Germany, <laughs> uh, heliports uh, planning and design, and we were in the classroom the whole week. And, and after a couple of days, you're thinking like a lot of theory and I mean a lot about lights and about uh, Haley decks and everything. But I told them and what we also always do at AVSIS is, is, is we have to also do the practical side to really see and feel what it's all about. Just go yeah. on the platform and go inside the plane and go... And I think that's really important because a lot of trainings everywhere globally are still so much about theory, but it's all about doing. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's also, I mean, you've been part of that for the last few years, why we are setting up these safety promotion centers there. The idea is also really to not just have uh, 
presentations in the classroom, but mm -hmm. to get people to experience and, and feel almost what is safety, what is unsafety, how does it yeah. feel like? Yeah. So plenty of opportunities, but also again, as we said, I think plenty to uh, to celebrate. Any more individuals that come to your mind, Chamsu, that you think, gosh, that's somebody who made a uh, a great contribution to to safety. We spoke about Dr. Demuran in Nigeria, Captain Belay. Uh, I mentioned Margaret Munyagi. Anybody else that comes to your mind? I mean, I'm putting you at the spot here, I know, but <laughs> well, uh, there, there, are, there are a lot of them. Uh, uh, recently, uh, more recently, C Captain Kibe did, did, did a lot in Kenya, and, and uh, uh, so he's, uh, he contributed a lot to the safety of suicide capability in Kenya. He's also he was also a leader a leader at council worldwide. And yeah, so and I think thing? he's actually participating in the lunch oh, okay. in Nairobi. <laughs> Hi, Captain. <laughs> <laughs> so um, yeah, certainly him as well. And, I, and I'm also thinking back of somebody else who I think we should celebrate today. He is somebody you've known for many years as well, Gausu. Oh yes, Bonata. yes, uh, great, great guy. Yeah, yeah, and he's been you know he's he's, he's beyond what the job asks from him. Yeah, he's exactly, also really yeah, committed yeah, to getting. Yeah. It's a, safety, it's, a, yeah. it's a living passion of uh, safety aviation, yeah. Yeah, so really. that's somebody else we should mention, yeah. Okay, well, I think um, it's more or less all we have time for today on this festive Africa day. Mm. So um, on that note, thank you very much, uh, Chamsu, uh, Marili, Nana, uh, for joining me here in the studio on this very special day. And again, from now on, I hope we will be able to celebrate it every year in our beautiful hangar. Uh, and address you there and uh, out in Africa and work with you in Africa. Then to your lovely viewers out there from Somalia to Niger to Kenya to Rwanda and Zambia, thank you for celebrating a bit of your Africa Day with us, for giving us some of your time. If you enjoyed today's focus session, please be our ambassador. Tell all your friends, all your colleagues, your future aviation professionals about the work of Aviasist. If you want uh, to help us con continue these focus sessions, consider becoming a friend of Aviasist. You can do that in our webshop, www.aviasist.org forward slash shop. And you can pay in many ways, including mobile money, the digital platforms, um, and your support will go a long way. If you want to continue free learning with Aviasist, visit our YouTube channel, where you can watch our previous focus sessions in your own time, whenever you want. You will have to join us in the live broadcast if you want to qualify for a certificate of attendance. Join us again on the 29th of July. On that day, we'll have a focus session in partnership with the Aviation Safety Alliance for Africa that is dedicated to runway safety and improving safety promotion for better runway safety. Come and visit us at our first AVSC Safety Promotion Center, the ASPC Rwanda. Lots of exciting courses coming up in, in October at our center that's based at the University of Rwanda. Uh, we'll be bringing you a four-day air law course, Nano, Nana, right in your uh, books, to Kigali, a peer support course for pilots and cabin crew to support mental health, uh, a safety management systems course, an airport obstacle course, uh, and probably a few more. And please don't forget, only you can target safety. Join us for the next focus session as we continue our mission with you to improve African aviation safety. Same time, same frequency. For now, we say zikomo to our Chinyanja speakers and viewers and have a good day to the rest of you.